Welcome back. If you just joined us, this is The Press. We're reaching you live from Kaftan's television studio here in the nation's capital, Abuja. Now we'll go straight to analyzing some of the headlines that we read out to you earlier. And we already have our guest seated here in the studio. Um, our guest on the show today is Obande Gideon Obande. He is the president of Chetohaki Doma Youth Wing. Great to have you on the show today. Same here. Great. It's been like ages. I had I had yeah. this discussion with you. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome again. Thank you. All right, yes, our phone lines are open. You can call in to make your contributions or ask your questions. And remember, you need to turn down the volume of your TV set if you need to make that call. And one minute to every caller. All right. So we have quite a number of um, headlines this morning, but I would like to start with um, this uh, uh, one that talks about fuel subsidy with all that nigerians are going through at the moment fuel subsidy removal from president ambola um, and saying that fuel subsidy is gone now nigerian tribune and so many other newspapers um, reads subsidy removal would have cost apc 20 apc's 2023 elections coming from president Muhammadu buhari he said he re actually removed it because he doesn't want to distract tinubu and mm. shetima mm. and my question here is i think um daily sun also um reads the same but in a different um perspective okay. now the only son says buhari's ex-aid reveals fuel subsidy secrets says ex-president delayed its removal to help apc win presidential election over time we keep hearing that fuel subsidy is a scam it needs to go but mm -hmm. then coming from the former president he says that um yes it's a scam but i needed to let it stay just because i didn't want to distract um the coming um, president so now is it is it political or is it supposed to be about the wealth of nigerians well um i will always say that when it comes to politics the maneuvering and interplay is what determines who wins or who loses elections right mm -hmm. now the right policy at the right time will earn you a nod from the masses but the right policy at the wrong time will earn you a booing from the masses mm. if you ask me i will say you will not change the fact that president muhammadu buhari is a product of a political system and a political party as such in his decisions as much as he loves nigeria he will want to be cautious about the victory of his party and so if his aide says it was delayed i won't agree less because i remember that before the elections there were rumors of you know the removal of the subsidy mm -hmm. and all of a sudden the presidency came out to say no it's going to be postponed mm -hmm. until so, so, so time mm -hmm. so it's clear that whatever the aide says is within you know the conference of our suspicion okay mm. because if the subsidy was removed as at that time there was no way that the ruling party would have won this election mm. would have won this election because the court is uh, is still talking and so we don't know whether or not they did or not but right now the president we have is from the ruling party president bola metinubu is the president of the federal republic of nigeria for now and we we have no option than to say yes the ruling party took that decision for political reasons okay i'll come back to where you just said for now because i'm wondering why you had to put that caveat yes. but then um like i asked before is mm. it supposed to be political or uh, let's do this because of the welfare of nigerians saying that he decided to delay its removal because he wanted apc to win mm. not because of nigerians because we had we were trying to um at least cushion the effect of what nigerians or maybe sus suspend or delay the effect of what nigerians will face afterwards mm -hmm. but because we wanted apc to win yes. doesn't it bother you well i will tell you this right the, in the creation of man man is naturally selfish okay if you are given food today as friendly as i and you are if you are hungry you will eat before you give me okay mm. so it's 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 a natural norm okay so his party as much as the nigerian masses matter to him his party matters to him too okay so the party has to come first before and nigerians so at this point the victory of his party because it was an electioneering season was prioritized over whatever nigerians will feel oh wow that was what simply played out mm. okay so president bora is being strategic to have taken it off as soon as he came mm. he's been strategic so that between now to the next electioneering season 
I trust that he should have been able to implement those strategies he has to balance and cushion the effect. So yes, the pain came. Oh yes, he took it off. So yes, Nigerians will still be happy. But then you keep that saying that he, he took it off, but some people will tell you that he, he only announced it. The um, former president took it off. The last time I remembered, as of May 29th, we're still buying fuel as at the price we're buying it. Mm. So whichever name you choose to give it, announce it, took it off. What I know is that right now, <laughs> it's off. And it was off when Bola Metinubu became president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. That's the record. You can't mm. change it. Now, if you want to talk about um, what Nigerians are going through at the moment mm. with regards to um, trying to manage this uh, fuel subsidy removal and its effect, you have to buy fuel for um, over 500 naira. I, I even saw another um, uh, another headline that says fuel might get to... Up okay, that's on Vanguard newspaper. It says Forex challenge driving petrol price towards 581 naira per liter mm. some people still you still complain about 537 or 540 now you might have to be buying it for almost 600 naira per liter mm. so what are the cautioning effect that you think that the government can actually bring in even if it's short term but at least let nigerians breathe in the mouth in the words of the president okay i will say this okay removing fuel subsidy for me as painful as it is is the best we should do now because so much of taxpayers' money and Nigerian sovereign wealth has gone down the drain in the name of wealth subsidy payment. You remember that once upon a time, under former President Goodluck Billy Jonathan, there was speculation that some cabals were using the fuel subsidy in quote to enrich themselves. Mm. A probe was launched, but we didn't know how it ended. Mm. Although it's a norm in Nigeria that we set up a lot of committees and then we don't get to know how the committees ended. Mm. What I wouldn't know is whether it's a problem of the masses or that of those who set it, who did set it up. But I want to believe that the blame should be both ways. The masses didn't ask questions about the committee and then those who set the committees or possibly just swept the reports under the carpet for interest sake. Whichever played out. The fact is, first subsidy from all we have seen had been more or less like a cash cow for some persons mm. and so removing it off totally yes for me i will tell you that uh, i i actually do support the removal totally but i have a problem with the modalities in place to cushion the effect of this removal okay i put it this way to you now if we are going to remove this subsidy i would have expected that maybe we had a reserve okay mm. of x quantity having had an idea of the consumption capacity of nigerians per day okay maybe we have had a reserve that can take cost for example for 90 days that's for like three months okay all right so that we are sure that within these three months that the subsidy is removed fuel okay, is available yeah. mm. Forex does not affect us, okay? Mm. And then we said, yes, we have removed, but we start implement implementation after 90 days. Okay. You, 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 you get my point. Can you actually reserve fuel? That's another Sorry? thing. There are tank farms where petroleum products are stored. Tank farms, yes. Okay. They use store petroleum products. All right? Now, we have big petroleum marketers, Amoguls, that could have been discussed with very di directly by government to say okay we need you to do this have some x storage you know that can sustain us for x period of time and then you remove and delay implementation of the remover so for three months nigerians are consciously preparing for the implementation of the remover that was announced Okay, so in other words, you're saying that it wasn't timely. I'm saying that removal was timely, but I'm saying implementation was poor. Uh -huh. Fact. Oh, okay. All right, now let's um, leave them um, fuel subsidy and go straight to other stories. Um, this one writes, um, and all. Okay, let's take it from Nations newspaper. It says discos await next nod to increase elect electricity tariff as um, distribution firms backtrack on hike notification review not justified. Coming from um, Yusuf, and then I also saw. 
another headline. I can't remember why I actually saw it saying that um, uh, the tariff hike. Okay, that's on Guardian newspaper. Says confusion in power sector mm -hmm. as discos hint at 300 naira per kilowatt um, electricity tariff. What are your thoughts on it in this regard? I tell you clearly that first and foremost, I want to start by saluting uh, the courage of um, President Bola Metinubu, GCFR for signing the power bill. Mm. For me, I didn't vote for him, all right? But it's one of the things he has done that is winning my heart. Oh, really? Oh, yes. Okay. Because signing that into law alone, for me, solves 50% of Nigeria's problem. You mean energy sector? Yes. How does it affect the fact that you might be buying um, um, electricity for 300 naira per kilowatt? It affects that fact now. These schools are in a rush to shoot it up. You know why? In a short time from now, private sector are going to invade the energy market. Ah, okay. <laughs> let's let's uh, pause for a minute and then take a break. I'll go on a quick break and when we return, we'll continue this conversation with Gideon Obandi. I will see you after this amount. If you just joined us, this is the press. We are reaching you live from Kaftan's television studio here in the nation's capital, Abuja. We're talking about, we're reviewing the newspaper for this morning, and I guess on the show today is Obandi Gideon Obandi, who is the president of Chet or High Kidoma um, Youth Wing. All right, so before we went on that break, we're still talking about um, why you think um, President Bola Ahmed Tinobu made the boss move with regards to the electricity, signing the electricity bill into law. And I was asking you, how does it affect the fact that the, uh, the masses have to buy um, electricity for as high as 300 naira per kilowatt? All right. Now, I want to take us back to the point where President Olusegun Obasanjo chose to deregulate the, communication, the telecommunication sector. Okay. If you remember at that time, you could buy a SIM card for as much as... 23,000, mm. you know, mm. 25, Upwards. you know. Mm. But gradually, we got to the point where a SIM card is even for free. Mm. And I will beg you, you credit. that you should, you know, buy 200 naira credit to activate it. Mm. So, bring it to the power sector. Okay. These schools are in a rush to, you know, hike their prices because very soon, they know that they are not meeting up with delivery as regards what the Nigerian masses want. Okay. And when credible alternatives spring up, the Nigerian masses will naturally go in that direction. So is it bad business for them? For, the for them, as capitalists, it's bad business. It's bad business. Uh -huh. Deregulating that sector, it's bad business for them. So they are in a rush, saying, okay, let's see what we can cash out before the market gets so competitive oh, okay. that we have to you know, begin to downplay. You remember that before, you can buy 500 naira recharge card mm. and you'll make just like two-minute calls. It's not same now. Mm. Okay? Because as soon as one network is not giving you what you want, you migrate to the next. Like they call it. You port to the next. Mm. And so they know that that time is coming. So what they are trying to do is, oh, let's get what we can get now so that when that time comes, we know that we'll maximize profit from the sector. Wonderful. But the question is, what is next saying about it? Mm -hmm. Because they, their decisions are meant to be regulated by someone. Mm. So what is the person saying about it? What is labor saying about it? Labor. Mm. Oh, yes. It's not, it shouldn't just be about first subsidy removal. Mm. It shouldn't just be about when they need salaries to be increased. Or as a strike. You know, this is something that affects every household in Nigeria. Mm. What is labor saying about it? What are state governments? Because you agree with me that the bulk of those who are governors now are fresh governments. What are their power strategies or energy strategies as you want to call it? How are they planning to tap into the opportunity that signing the Energy Act has created? Mm. There are opportunities there. They can cash in on it. Some states can decide to go solar. Mm. Some can decide to go wind. Some can decide to maintain the hydropower we're talking about. What are states doing? How willing are states to take these opportunities? This is what will change the Nigerian power system. 
So does it mean that at some point, um, when you have um, um, probably the organized private sector coming into this business, you have state coming into this business, mm -hmm. and they might have to kick the discos away? The discos will choose to remain in the market if they will deliver quality service at affordable prices. Uh -huh. If they choose not to deliver quality services and they still prefer to keep their prices on the high side, the masses will go for quality services and alternatives that are affordable Hmm. And naturally, they will fizzle out of the market. The Nigerian industrial sector and her growth is dependent on this act. Hmm. President Bola Metinobu shot at it. He got it right. Awesome. Hmm. All right, let's leave um, that one and then come straight to other stories. Security or securing Nigeria yes. and Nigerians. Um, you have um, Nations newspaper says Rebadu, CDS, IG um, says we will secure Nigeria. NSA resumes office as Egberto Kung raises um, special squad. And the Guardian newspaper says Re Rebadu takes over as NSA vows to deepen security and stability. Now let's talk about um, the new service chiefs and then the appointment of um the former efcc boss mm. malam nohu ribado as the nsa a lot of reactions mm. have trailed and it uh, keeps trailing in that regard some people say that it is political that you have um uh, someone who was um in the police intelligence now become the nsa because it, it used to be the seat it, that uh, position has always been um occupied by military and personnel aside from i think in 1999 where you had um some of uh, police uh, um personnel who occupied that seat but there's some people who say that do you remember that and the nsc that's the new nsa um contested to become president is some time ago he also contested few if i even last this um last election he also contested to become the governor of adamawa state so there might be some political unions in that regard that might taint his decision do you agree well this is my answer to Nigerians. Even in the house, there is politics. The father won't say which of the children he loves more, but there is one that any request he or she made is granted. <laughs> Most definitely. So, let's leave it out. The question should be, can Nuhu Rubadu fill in the seat of the National Security Advisor? That should be the question. Is he competent enough? Don't tell us that it is meant for the, 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 the three armed forces. No, don't tell us that. You said already that in the 99s, we had the police there. Mm. Now, even after 99, we have had the armed forces, and all we have had is multiplication of security issues we cannot keep doing the same thing and expect a different result let's try a new approach mm. and let me remind us that in fighting terrorism the first move to drop the impact of terrorism is to track and block their finances mm. i wish to remind you that the man feeling that seat as we speak no very bad is the pioneer EFCC boss of this country. He has a lot of intelligence and a lot of network as long as financial issues and tracking is concerned. Now, if you have to talk about, sorry, I have to put in there. Now, if you have to talk about the um, network that he has, yes. I've also heard, I've read um, reactions trailing that um, part saying that um, now he has a lot of friends and then um, you might, what if he has to um, step on toes? Because in every situation, you have people who are cashing out on it, mm. even security. Mm. Some people are cashing out, making a great kill out of it. Oh, yeah. So if he has um, friends or network who are cashing out of this security, would he be able to step on their toes? Well, I want to reinform you. That the same Nuhu Ribadu we are talking about had stepped on those before. He was stepping on serving governors under the Obasanjo regime. He was clamping down on them. Give it whatever name you want to give it. Tell it political. Tell it whatever. The truth is, he stepped on them. I have the full confidence that for a man who had dreamt to be president of this country before, he definitely has the interest of this country at heart. I want to salute uh, the president once more for making the decision he made for the service chiefs, particularly 
the CDS, mm. the Southern Kaduna people have been crying, okay? The Christian minority in the Middle Belt have been crying. Mm. Mr. President, in his wisdom, gave one of their own the office of the Chief of Defense Staff, Major General Chris Mosa. So do you think that in terms of ethnic balancing, it was a great move? I am saying that his decision was a clear proof that he understood the Nigerian security problem and he has shown determination to solve it by that decision. That was why he changed the norm. The norm is we have somebody, a retired military general or a retired or a retired military appointed to that. He changed it. He brought a policeman. Yes. The police is in charge of internal security. Take it or leave it. And I will tell you that the police have a wider coverage than all the all the, 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 the uniform uh, 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 agencies that we have in this country. They have the highest number of manpower too. And this is a former police boss. India intelligence. So he has a lot of information available that I believe he's going to use. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then the decision of the individuals that filled the various offices, you could see the, the, the decision of, 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 of the chief of naval staff, the decision, of course, I've talked about the CDS, you mm -hmm. see that of the, the chief of army staff, of course, his area, oh yes, as president, he has to put someone he can trust, you know, to be in charge of the, 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 the ground troops. But now, when you again look into the, the, the decisions of appointments, okay, mm -hmm. by the, 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 the chief of army staff, for example, a sensitive military installation like the NDA, the chief of army staff again appointed the middle delta as commandant of the NDA, mm. Major General uh, Ochai. Mm. These are proofs that there is correlation, there is discussion going on between the set man and his team. Okay, mm. he's trying to balance. You know, where he couldn't cover for major appointments, for other sub-appointments, he's trying to balance this. All of this is to ensure that everybody is captured in the security architecture to proffer solutions and get this thing solved. And I yeah. think that he's going to do greatly if he continues with this pace in the security sector. All right, let's quickly take a call before we continue. Hello, good morning. Good morning, are you there? Okay um call us back if you can and and okay let's take other stories but still on um, security now right. i'm talking about um the service chiefs and then the security personnel i hear you say that um the police has the largest um, number of manpower, security yes. manpower yes now if you have to put with, with over time we've heard of um inter-service rivalry yes. between the service chiefs or even other security agencies mm -hmm. dss the sss the mm -hmm. efcc the dia inter-service rivalry mm -hmm. so how much do you think that he would be in the middle um with um always talking back um always um returning his uh, um directives back to the president but they're still been at the middle of all of this to put all of these um, people together in one house before we take that let's quickly take our call yeah. hello good morning yeah, good morning good morning sir tell us your name or where you're calling us from well yeah uh, i am paul calling from uh, a boy state paul from a boy state go ahead Go ahead, we can hear you. Okay, please go ahead. All right. Now, as I will always say, President Bola Metinobu took the bull by the horn by changing the norm. It's not a policeman there, okay? Mm. When we had military men there, the police collaborated and gave reports and all of that, okay? Mm. Now, we expect that the army, the air force, the navy will do same now. The office of the national security advisor, as the office sounds, national. They are part of the nation. They are working for the nation, and they should answer to that office. Do you think that there will be answers? I am this? saying that Mr. President should enforce that answer. Okay, so now it lies back on the president again. Yes, the president has demonstrated enough will to have made this appointment. The owner still lies on the president to ensure that due process is followed in the communication of security issues to him. 
which means that they should properly debrief the, the national security advisor to play his role by debriefing mr president and when the nsa thinks that there is need for an expanded meeting he will also organize such a meeting between the service chiefs and the president that is what should be done there is no superiority of service by the acts that established each of them but you've seen this happen time and time again i am again. saying that the fact that it has been happening time and time again does not mean we should allow it to keep happening as i will always say we don't do the same thing and expect a different result so we are looking forward to see proper collaboration seeing the dss boss channel information to the nsa mm. seeing the nia boss interact with the nsa See the 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 the, the, the three armed forces, the chief of air staff, chief of naval staff, chief of uh, 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 of army staff relate with him. The CDS relate with him. Okay, the CDI, the chief of defense intelligence relate with him, so that information sharing can make them effective. Mm. So all operations at the time when bombings were going on, okay, you could see the blame trading mm. within agencies. Mm. Uh, I told you, mm. I did, you didn't tell me, and you didn't say it like it, you meant it. Even if you know that all that happened during the um, Kuje prison attack, you know, blame trade. Blame trade. So if we have had the National Security Advisor having that information, given Mr. President, and Mr. President giving directive to which agency should do what. Who we'll have that? Mm. But everybody is trying to sabotage everybody and prove that I'm more efficient. Nigerians don't want to know if your agency is more efficient. Nigerians want to know that Nigeria is safe for them. Mm -hmm. Simple. Most definitely. All right, let's um, take a story from um, Nation's newspaper. says... Right there, says, um, battling oil theft, one of the huts belonging to militant oil thieves set ablaze by troops during a raid of their camps in Bayelsa yesterday. And we saw, you can see that picture story right there, like, um, that's one, three pictures that says 1,000 words. And you recall recently, the ex-militant Asari Dokubo went mm -hmm. to the president and made some statements indicting the military mm -hmm. uh, of um, sabotage mm -hmm. uh, with regards to oil thieves and bunkering and all of that. But then now you see that the military now made this boss move just yesterday. Do you think that there's any connection between the two? Do you want me to talk as a Nigerian? I want you to talk as a Nigerian. <laughs> Why is the boss thing coming after Asari's position? And do you agree to Asari's uh, position though? Asari is an ex-militant. Asari is a militant commander. Asari is talking about his place. In intelligence gathering, the inhabitant of a place even know more about what happens in their place and who does what. What are you who say you are a security man? If they want to keep the, the criminals, you will not get access to them. But then you've heard them um, so many reactions saying that he's just looking for political appointment. That's why he made that statement. My dear, if that is how to look for political appointment and weeks after he finished talking, we see this, please, you should keep looking for a political appointment so that we'll keep seeing results. Tom Polo came out before the end of last government. I made a lot of revelations. What didn't we hear? Were his revelations true? Yes. A documentary I watched on Channel TV of theft and all of that proved that the man was saying what was correct. So what are we saying? So let me tell you something. Let me tell you this. When every government comes and a new government comes on board, individuals try to make themselves cabals mm. in certain areas to take charge no doubt but what we should be looking at is if what these people are saying have any element of truth in it mm -hmm. okay we hear that people pay money to be posted to the south south on special operations mm. okay some persons go to the south south and they will do anything to remain in the south south and retire from the south south we hear all of that the question is, is it the truth? The answer is, the people living in the Niger Delta will tell us whether it is the truth. The reality is, Asari is one of them. Tombolo is one of them. The 
They cannot just come and be lying to us. Maybe journalists like you should launch investigative journalism to try to assert whether what they said is true or false. All right, then let's quickly take this call before we go ahead. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, beautiful morning to you, Annabelle, uh, Mr. Gideon Obandi. Beautiful morning to you. Beautiful you so morning to you. Are. Good morning. SND from Lagos. Go ahead, go please. Ahead. Thank you very much, Obandi. Uh, let me appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, let me begin by one proverb in my language, uh, but I'll put it in English. Mm. That uh, the reality of this day come largely from the way you think, the way you feel, the way you observe, and the way you act. So, mm. with what we are seeing, let me begin by the appointment from Mr. President and then from the uh, Speaker of the National Assembly. You will look at it in this way. There is a lot of differences. If you can remember, on the 31st of May 2020, there is an open letter written by the retired uh, 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 Omar, uh, challenging Mr. President, that is the former President, uh, 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 uh Buhari, on lopsided appointments. Mm. And remember, within that period of time, there is a publication in the Punch newspaper, I cannot exactly remember the date, that uh, there are so many government agencies, uh, almost 80 government agencies were not appointed, uh, they, are, they don't have a head of the department, which mm. is very, very wrong. 80 government agencies, no any DG, no any director, you understand, that was then 2020. So these are issues that we need to put into consideration, not that we're seeing this kind of appointment. Now, we cannot talk until we see their action. Mm. Is Nigeria in their heart? Because all we are talking about is lack of patriotism. Mm. There is no how you give somebody a meaningful appointment and you cannot see what, in fact, that appointment, you know, brings to the nation. We're not talking about you belong to social background. No, we are talking about merit. And I remember on the 28th of May, 2023, Mr. President, His Excellency Aswajo Ahmad Balatinambu made mention something that his appointment is going to be on national competence. Yes. So let us keep our hope alive and then monitor these uh, uh, officers, see what they can be able to come up. Mm -hmm. So that we know that, yeah, we are at the right track. And the issue of this rivalry between the DSS, the Army, the Navy, and this is something that we need to do away with it because I could remember this is an this is an officer that know what is right for them. It's an a right from the IG, I mean from the police force, from the army, from the navy, from the air force, from the DSS, from the NIA, from the DIA, the DSS, and everybody knows his position. Yes. Everybody knows his portfolio. Right. What we need from them is strategy. Mm. And what we need from them is the Nigeria in their heart. Nigeria is before mm. anything, like America used to say. Any president come from America, he will tell you America first. Yes. So let, mm. them, let, them, let them behave in that manner. Oh. Nigeria first, like mm. I always made mention. We don't have any other country than this, our country, Nigeria. Most definitely. <laughs> Building a nation is a collective responsibility. Whether yes. you are appointed, you are not appointed, as far as you are in Nigeria, you have to give your own contribution towards the building of this nation. Yes. Our whole body, the late Nabi Azikwe, the late Kawolowo, the late Madam Aminikano, the late Kaka, the late Tafawanewa, when it comes to nation building, they keep their party differences aside, they keep their religious differences aside, they face the nation. All right. That is why Thank I you think so much. the reality of this day comes largely from the way you think, the way you feel, the way you observe, and the way you act. Now, what we want is let's talk more action. Thank mm. you very much. I remember SMD from Lagos. SMD from Lagos. Thank you so much for your contribution, always. All right. We might need to land on your talk before we take the next story. Okay. So, as I will always say, so far, so good on the decisions of Mr. President with the security chiefs satisfactory. Okay. A lot is expected at this point from Nuhu Ribado as an NSA to be able to, you know, put out 
to Nigerians that he has the capacity to coordinate all the uh, relevant agencies to do their jobs and do it effectively. And the system can be rest assured that Nigerians are tired of insecurity and so Nigerians will be ready to avail them all the support. Mm. But what Nigerians will not take is another excuse as to why our country should remain insecure. Mm. Nigerians won't take it. And so all we are going to tell President uh, Bola Metinubu is that as soon as you see that any of the service chiefs is compromising or seem not to be doing what is expected of him, he should not waste time to remove such a person. All right. Let's take um, one or two more stories before we end this program. A Guardian newspaper says, despite Mbaz's order, Monday seats at home persist in Enugu. What, what are your thoughts in that regard? Saying a lot of people keep, most of them keep saying that release um, Namdekano. Even him has not even gone, gone to beg that he, they should be released. But then he says, everybody come out and go to your offices. But people are still scared to go to their offices or go out. And you still have this Monday sit at home order. What, what are your thoughts? What can be done see, in this see, regard? See, 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 see. Let's, let's be very factual, okay? When the sit at home issue started, some Nigerians did not take it serious mm. as a result people lost lives people lost properties and all of that right one governor coming to sit i like right i like the the courage you know and the 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 the, 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 the confidence governor Mba of Enugu state exudes but this goes beyond just that how involved is governor Mba currently in the crusade of the release of Nandikano. Remember that this order was given while Nandikano was there. Mm. And it was implemented to the latter. You don't sit and call Nigeria, what security arrangements have you made to protect lives and properties? And you expect them to come out because you just said so? We want to see workings. He's interested in things returning to normal. We want to see him at the forefront, leading Southeast governors and stakeholders to go and hold meetings with President Bola Metinobu and other stakeholders from other regions, you know, to come and say, okay, let's beg, let's see how we can use a non-kinetic approach to resolve the Southeast problem. Mm. We are talking about our country for goodness sake. There's no need for pride, there's no need for ego. I salute the fact that the, 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 the man in question, uh, Maze Nandikalu, is, is already, you know, showing some degree of remorse, you know, and making some statements. I do not agree with the Nigerians that are insisting that he should be kept there. I do not. And they have people like uh, who are who called him a criminal, and then some Mahatma Gandhi says, "Whatever is right is right, and whatever is wrong is wrong, regardless of who is doing it." Was his arrest legitimate? Is his incarceration legitimate? We agree that this is a, an issue of national security, but I wish to remind us that this is also a Nigeria. And he deserves to enjoy every right and benefit that every Nigerian has, has enjoyed. I want to appeal through this medium to President Bola Metinubu that a lot of things have gone wrong. And that is why he has come in to play the role he's playing as we even stand now. I want to appeal to him to look at an option of a non-kinetic approach to resolving the IPOB and Southeast Quagmire. Oh. So that Nigerians in the Southeast can have their normal life back. Mm. It's important. Very important. I agree with you on that one. Let's quickly take this call. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Good morning, sir. Uh, good morning, Mr. Gideon. Uh, I hope I got your name right. Yes. Gideon Obande. Tell us your name. Very quickly. All right. Mr. I came from Lagos at Gideon. I came from Lagos. Great to hear from you today. Go ahead. Yeah, I understand. Thank you. Yeah, let me quickly because you're almost uh, getting to your list. Okay. Um, I want to commend you. You are very, very correct in all you are right. And I want to comment on the issue of Finland uh, Kano. Yes, I agree with you. The, kind of, uh, the political aspect, what actually brought about Finland Kano? What is Finland Kano actually even demanding or asking for? All these things 
need to be set out for so that at least you know the camera must not be asking for what is impossible, okay? As for the UC of Nigeria, that is one thing for sure. So now that the president uh Anne is a new president and for his administration to continue without much of this, okay? Uh, I want to believe if he, uh, he, 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 he we should give him some time, okay, at least maybe one, at least to set it out properly. But that discussion definitely ought to come out and like you see, the South Eastern the leaders there, I guess you uh, I don't want to say they should learn from the South West so that it can only insult it, okay? Insult mm -hmm. it At least to the group side from South West, they only come together. They should come together and find a way out and discuss it, meet him at the county himself, then finalize on the unity of Nigeria and solving the issue that the South East shows that that he must realize. Let's okay. say the fact. Okay? okay. So let us take it down, then let's discuss. Because the Nigeria itself needs a discussion. Okay? So that is that. So right. I, I, I pray the so called uh, iPhone or whatever they call themselves, they calm down. Because without calming down, they can't really take it down. And lastly, please, sorry, lastly, what I hate about the threat that the British is issuing to Nigeria, that because in Nigeria is a decision of Britain, that, that they will, they, they, uh, they will they contain Nigeria for Commonwealth. We don't even want Commonwealth. Please, I, I, anything like Sanctum or whatever for all these Britain or whatever our are working at, we don't want this this time. Let's discuss ourselves and right. manage this because I don't trust this Western system. They can just create problems in this country. All right, thank you so much, Akira. Let's destroy the country. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank I feel calling us from Lagos. Good to hear from you again. Hello, good morning. Are you there? Good morning. Hello, good morning. Good morning, sir. Tell us your name and where you're calling us from. Good morning, Anna. Good morning, sir. Yes, I want to I want to continue keeping about the issue of land becoming. Okay, we didn't get your name then. Like the gentleman in the house there said. Honestly, I want to put all the blame on the on Nigeria on uh, South East governors and others there. Honestly, they are falling, you know, they are they are lagging behind in in, in, in some of their duties and responsibility in protecting the welfare of the youth in that region. This cannot happen in South West here that we are staying. You yeah. understand? So we see how governors in South West come together when issue there is issue that affect them. Plan the canon is a figure that goes, you know, that is more powerful than five eastern governors. And we can see it by the order people obey him more than those governors. So what does this people need to do? When the new president has been sworn in, even though it's look as uh he's still, uh, you know yeah, there is something I uh, um, when the new president has this one, right. what they're supposed to do is to pay him a visit mm -hmm. and make sure that they tender this uh, issue before him to make him understand that this is our first priority since, you know, the past administration has, was very, very feasible in tackling it. He seems to not All right, thank you so much. We have to let you go. Thank you so much for your Hello? contribution. Thank you so much for your contribution. Right. Very well taken. All right, um, time is fast, Ben, but if you can help us in just one or two minutes. Mm. Punch newspaper says, Sen um, Senate Minority Leader PDP Atiku sets to clash with G5 over Tamboa. And the writer to that story says, uh, Atiku, a party man will, break, will back PDP's choice, says aid as Minority Leader emerges in July 4th. G5 backing Jaribe. And then you have or thumbs aid insist lawmakers want pdp on sokoto um ex-governor so you have all of this um all of this uh wish wash with regards to nigeria's political scene you have um pdp um apc uh you have uh Atiko right there you have um the governor or former governor of uh, river state who might say he might there's any possibility of him moving to APC and all of this happening in the political scene. What are your thoughts in that regard? And I told you I was going to recall, I was going to bring back the uh, statement that you made saying that um, President Mama, uh, President Bola Ahmed Timubu, for now, is the president for now. So let's put all of this together. What are your thoughts? I tell you this. My statement was, was out of sincerity of thought and purpose because as we all know, the issue of the... 2023 presidential elections is before the court. Mm. The court is the hope of a common man. Mm -hmm. I am not in the heart of the judges. 
And so I cannot preempt what their judgments will be. My prayer is that their judgment should be to the benefit of our great country, Nigeria. And their judgment should give Nigerians what they yearn and deserve, not desire. What you desire sometimes may not be what you deserve. And mm. so my prayer is that God gives to Nigerians through the judiciary what Nigerians deserve, not what Nigerians desire. Because sometimes the things we have desired have brought more pains to us. Okay? So that is what I will say on that issue. Now back to the issue of the minority leader. I ask a simple question. The G5 governors are from which political party? The PDP. The PDP as a political party, do they have an institutional arrangement as per how discussions and decisions are taken? Hmm. What is the NWC meant for? What is the PDP neck meant for? Who and who forms the NWC? the neck and all of that now when all of these are put together the question should be who actually does have the right to decide the office of the minority leader in a case where there are clashing interests what is the prescribed tool to use in settling or solving this. It shouldn't be about an Arajati Kwabubaka or the G5 governors or an Aminu uh, Kambuwa. It shouldn't be about individuals. Mm. The party, the party is bigger than any individual or group of persons. Mm. I say it without reservation and without recourse to anyone because it is clear by the electoral act as amended that without the party no individual can become anything for now hmm. so the party as an institution should do the right thing and may i speak to the leaders of the pdp that for once they should come out stand up sit up and make nigerians know that they are actually a credible minority in the senate and no leave issues in the hands of individuals that respond and react to issues as an institution all right we are watching nigerians are watching and nigerians will answer them as at when you better i'll give it to the both persons i mean was it former speaker former governor he is credible senator jaribe is credible he had served at some point in, 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 at the, the state level in Cross River State. He was in the House of Rep. He was in the last Senate. He's also in this Senate. He is credible. All right. I think we should have to leave it there. If we continue, keep, if we keep going, our time is fast spent. But time is never our friend to, for in, when we keep discussing this matters. Thank you so much, Gideon Obandi. It's always a pleasure having these discussions with you. Same here.